I'm strong enough, and I can do this. It's all I ever wanted for as long as I can remember. I want to do what you do. I want to be just like you. You will be, son. Is Mark, aka Invincible, becoming like his father? I've been asking myself this question since the season 2 finale, as we get a perfect parallel between Invincible and Omni-Man, with Invincible absolutely curb stomping Angstrom, and letting out all that built up rage from the events of season 2 get the best of him. Also, spoiler warning for this video, I mean if you're watching this, I'm going to assume you're all caught up on Invincible. So back to the original question, is Invincible becoming like his father? To answer this question, I feel like we need to go back through season 2 and pick out important scenes that give off hints leading to this, scenes where there are subtle signs of Invincible becoming just like Omni-Man. Regardless of my answer as well, I have a bit of a theory near the end of the video which completely changed the way I see Invincible and could be why Invincible is slowly becoming just like his dad. I'm not my dad. I'm not my dad. With the events that Mark went through in Season 1, it comes as no surprise that he would be a little bit rebellious in Season 2, which would lead to Cecil and Mark having a bit of an argument over whether or not Mark is ready to get back out into the field as Invincible. When Mark does rebel against Cecil's wishes, he makes a slight dig at Mark, comparing him to Omni-Man. Mark would argue back and slam the table in anger and frustration, telling Cecil that he's not his dad. It's important to take note of this important statement because later on in the show, it comes back as a little bit of a callback. I can't blame for wanting to get back out there and help people. He feels as if he's to blame for the destruction that his father caused and therefore wants to save as many people as possible to repair some of that damage. No one else blames Mark for Omni-Man's actions and everyone even sympathizes with him, but Mark is always going to blame himself. And we see exactly how this affects him later down the line when he's fighting just about anyone. What's also quite interesting about this scene is Mark doesn't want to be like his dad, but in arguing back with Cecil and smashing the table, he's only showing signs of being a Viltrumite. Again though, I can't blame Mark, he's genuinely frustrated about not being able to fight back in season one, and now that he's had time to get stronger, he is ready to do so much more. You would never, like you said, I'm Omni Man's son. You have no idea. Darkwing's sidekick versus Invincible is a pretty interesting fight. It's obvious that Mark is holding back during this fight as we've seen him fight way bigger threats and to be honest I think Invincible would have continued holding back if it wasn't for the fact of Nightwing's sidekick taking him to the Shadowverse. It also doesn't help that Nightwing's sidekick would continue to taunt Invincible by referring to him as Omni-Man's son because this only reminds Mark of what he endured at the end of season 1 and it's pretty obvious from the previous clip that Mark really doesn't like being compared to his father. However once again in Mark trying to stray away from acting like his father, he only ends up becoming more like him, especially when he threatens Darkwing's sidekick and is willing to actually keep him trapped within the Shadowverse as well, which even Darkwing's sidekick said he wouldn't dare stay too long. Invincible was only doing what he had to do to get out of that situation, but in doing so, he just shows that he's becoming more like his father than he thinks. She's trying to kill you, Mark. If you're not trying to kill her, you're going to die. Here's where things get really interesting though. When Mark travels off to Fraxen and finds his dad, it's like all his frustrations up to now finally get to come out. He lays it into Omni-Man for what he did, not by fighting, but with words, which for a change differs Mark from Nolan because Nolan in most situations punches his way out of them. Mark is incredibly strong here by not taking out all of his rage onto his dad. I mean, Mark wouldn't stand a chance against Nolan probably anyway, but it's great to see him not choose violence in the first place. And although he cusses his dad out a lot for his actions back on earth, he at least tries to understand. The bittersweet reunion wouldn't last long though because Viltrumites of course invade the planet in search of Nolan and would force both Nolan and Mark to fight back. For a while, Mark still holds back trying to fight the opposing Viltrumites without seriously hurting them, but the other Viltrumites were raised to become as strong as they could, so they would punch way harder than anything Mark has had to face on earth. And then Invincible finally stops holding back and to no surprise gets the upper hand for a while until he falls back into that human nature of his and doesn't go for the killing blow, leaving him wide open. Although he survives this encounter, I think it comes off as a bit of a harsh reality to Mark that he'll eventually have to stop honing back as much if he hopes to have any chance of fighting back against the Viltrumite race. 
Anissa versus Invincible is arguably the fight that teaches Mark how much is at stake in this war against Viltrum. It teaches Mark that not everyone can withstand even the smallest strike from a Viltrumite. So when his girlfriend at the time, Amber, is in a dire situation, it brings Mark back down to earth and shows him that this is a serious situation. And whether he likes it or not, he'll eventually have to fight against Viltrum if he wants to save the people he loves. It feels like up to this point, Mark has obviously been trying his hardest not to become anything like his dad, but the more he tries to resist, the worse the situations he's in become. At this point, he's actively letting other people around him get hurt because he's continuing to hold back in fear that he'll become just like Omni-Man. It doesn't help when Mark continues to put up resistance against Anissa because although she may not be here to kill him or anybody else currently, it's going to make the situation worse in the long run. Overall, this fight once again teaches Mark the harsh reality that he lives in and that the human side of him will have to be repressed if he wants to win more. I mean, I don't think he stood any chance against Anissa anyway at this point in the story. Story, but it's the idea that he's always holding back which gets him more injured. I'll never let anyone ever hurt my family! Ah! This is the big fight that the season was leading up to the entire time. The Invincible versus Angstrom fight was nothing short of incredible. Watching Mark go through so many universes and getting into several fights, all while losing his sanity over time, was enough to push him over the edge. So when he finally did fight Angstrom, he didn't hold back. For the first time in his life, Mark didn't hold back. It also doesn't help that Angstrom gassed himself up as someone who can take a hit from a Viltrumite only to get absolutely annihilated by Invincible. Just witnessing Mark go full Viltrumite in this scene is incredible, at least for us the viewers, because for Mark, this is hell. He's become everything he swore to avoid, finally comparing himself to his father, and sure, Mark didn't kill hundreds of innocent civilians, but for Mark, it doesn't matter how many people he did or didn't kill, it's just the fact that he killed one person, which is enough for him to have a total breakdown. So what's my theory on Invincible? Why have I completely changed my outlook on Mark Grayson? Well, my big theory on him is that no matter how hard he tries to avoid becoming his dad, his fate is to become exactly like his father. I believe that Viltrumite DNA is so strong and so in control that Invincible can't help but feel the violence coursing through him every time he fights. So although he's done a great job so far at holding back, now that he's taken a life, I think he's bound to do it again. I think he'll stop holding back as much from now on. If he meets a worthy opponent, he'll use his full power on that threat. And it all goes back to what Mark said in season one. I want to do what you do. I want to be just like you. So yeah, I think Mark will become just like Nolan at some point. He may not kill hundreds of innocent people, but I think he'll start looking at others as lesser than him, which makes him a lot more of a Viltrumite than he may like to admit. Another thing to note as well is that they purposely show all the different Invincibles from other universes. Not only is this foreshadowing for later on, but also so we can now compare those Invincibles to our one, because now there is nothing to separate them, as Invincible has taken a life. Thank you so much for watching this video as always. What are your opinions on Invincible Season 2? Did you enjoy it or were you left wanting a little bit more from the season? I know a lot of people are hyping up Season 3 because of certain story elements that are going to be portrayed on screen, all of which I'm not going to dig into too much. But if you would like to see more Invincible content from me, then click on this video next. Otherwise, internet stranger, I hope you have a great day. Andre, logging off.